Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Randacia or Randy for short. And in today's video, we are going to be setting up my February budget for 2022. So if that interests you, then stay tuned. Okay guys, so we're gonna switch it up just a little bit for this um, February budget. I'm gonna go ahead and let's try to zoom you guys in. Okay, so my February budget is all set up. Let's go ahead and flip over. So for February budget, I am not going to do the digital cash envelopes in this video. I'm going to make a separate one because my thinking is one January setup uh, budget video was way too long. It was an hour and a half or like an hour and 40 minutes or something. It was over an hour, which I didn't want. So what I'm trying to do is just condense the budget videos, but still give them like the quality and the detail that you guys are used to. So, um, I'm going to split the digital, um, cash stuffing videos into a separate video which will be the next one after this and then this one will still be my budgeting um, from start to finish in this planner so you'll have all the details and those of you who just like the budgeting and not really interested in like the digital cash envelope stuffing can just watch this video and then those who just want to watch the cash stuffing can just watch that video so there you go all right so this video might be a little bit more chatty just because I've been doing the same process for like over over a year now um, that I've been using my drill down budget template so or now I guess it's a planner haha <laughs> um, so I'm not going to be backing into my sinking funds like I normally do because I just really do that for you guys because I don't know at what point you guys are coming into the videos like that you find me. Um, so I try to be just thorough and do it like somebody who maybe just found me today or yesterday or what have you. But from now on, I'm just going to go through my budget as if nobody's watching but i'm still going to tell you guys like my thought process and why i'm doing what i'm doing in my budget just not going to be going through the extra steps so you guys will see what i mean so our take-home pay uh amount that we're budgeting is five thousand six hundred but i will tell you guys that um i already have my numbers as usual because with my drill down budget um process I start with my annual budget, which is on Excel. So I come up with like, I review my annual budget monthly, and then I make all the tweaks to my monthly budget um, before I put it down on paper. So my monthly budget is already done digitally, but I like paper planning. So I just basically copy everything from Excel into this planner so that I can break it down weekly on paper. Um, so that is why I don't just use my annual budget in Excel. I just prefer paper when it comes to the monthly and on. Okay, so business, we are expecting 238 spot 98, and that total is 5,838 spot 98. Okay, so the mortgage is 1,864, oops, writing that all outside. Of the lines let's do that a little bit better 1864 spot 66 the child care is 1140 water and trash is 130 uh, electric is 15 natural gas is 150 I'm hoping that this is the last month that natural gas is up so high, but we shall see. It is. It just depends because sometimes um, in Southern California, it could get hot as early as like February, like now, um, or it could be until like April, it'll start getting hot, but it just kind of depends. But I feel like it's going to be a short winter this time and it's going to start getting hot early. I'm hoping not, but for this natural gas bill, it kind of benefit us if it did but I don't mind we run our AC like 24 7 so it's always a crisp 71 degrees in this house um life insurance for my husband is 71.55 um it's still on his to-do list I'm still nagging him to call them 
which I'm gonna probably get off of this video and remind him to call them and see why his uh, premiums went up. But my life insurance is 5764. Vivint, our home insurance is 5647. MetLife, which is our car insurance, is 309. Uh, Frontier, which is our how our home internet, is 6786. Uh, Verizon 123. I am thinking about getting a new phone just because um, if I haven't said it, I believe. I'm going to go out. I think I reconfirmed that I wanted to keep my tickets. I have to double check. I like, in just like this rage of madness, I cleared all of my inboxes because I have multiple emails. Y'all know how it go. If you don't want to give out your real email, you create a backup fake, fake email that you just give out for all the spammers. But I just had so many emails, like thousands of emails because I never clear out my emails and it's just ridiculous at this point especially with the spam like I probably had tens of thousands of emails in my across all my email addresses and it was ridiculous and I just one day was like eff it delete 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 and I think my go wild email I'm pretty sure it was in there so but we'll figure that out for right now, I am going to go out. That is one of the things for this February budget that I need to think of. It's not in this budget because if I am going, then I'm going to end up taking it out of savings because back in what, 2020, when it was first announced and I bought tickets, I had set aside money for it. But since it got pushed back and all that kind of good stuff, I ended up using the money that I had set aside because I thought I wasn't going to go. And blah, blah, blah. Y'all know the drill. So... In the back of my mind, I'm working on what I, what I'm gonna do for Go Wild. Um, I still have to book a hotel, all that kind of good stuff. But I can let you guys know right now, I'm probably not gonna go wild. That's just not my style. Um, I'm, I was actually kind of surprised that uh, all of like the Go Wild merchandise that I was seeing from like previous Go Wild vlogs and videos and stuff, you buy that before you go to the go wild conference like they don't sell that there there's only like vendors there and yeah i was i was that was interesting so um yeah I'm, and in the sense of like go out i'm not going to be buying all this kind of crazy all the all the things yeah i bought a shirt back in 2020 when you know we it was first supposed to happen but um yeah, I now wear that shirt to sleep and I'll probably buy another one just because, but that's probably all I'm gonna buy for Go Wow. I don't really see me buying really any other kind of like memorabilia. I can't even say that word. Any other kind of like tchotchkes from Go Wow. So, um, yeah, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated, but just know that's, that's a possibility for March. Um, ID theft is $12.90, Amazon Kids is $2.99, and Netflix is $13.99. Okay, and that total is 4015.06 with a remainder of $1,823.92. Okay, moving on to gas groceries and all the things. Gas, we are doing 360. Groceries, we are doing 160. Costco, we are doing 350. And diapers, we are doing 40 for a total of 910 and a remainder of 913 spot 92. So um, if you're new, first video, I'm just taking the total out of the remaining balance from the previous section so this is a running total um just in case you're new to my drill down budget planner um car loan and i have the printout from my annual um my annual spreadsheet right here so that's what i'm like looking at in front of me um okay Car loan is 
Kaiser, which is a hospital bill for my labor and delivery of the twins is 126 for a total of 382 spot 29 and a remaining take this amount from the previous amount and that's going to give me 531 spot 63. Okay, sinking funds, which I'm using this sinking funds line as um, a dump for any money that is remaining from this monthly uh, budget. So all said and done, once all the bills are paid and sinking funds and all that good stuff are funded, we're going to have $22.65 left, which is fine because all of, all of our needs have been met already and that's just extra. Um, clothing is a hundred, uh, fun slash, no, that is not fun slash holidays. What is that? That is fun slash holidays. Why am I giving fun slash holidays $50? Hmm. Oh, I, I was so confused. I'm like, do I rate, I usually put money in there? Um, $50, which is for Valentine's day. Um, yeah, I'm just scanning my spreadsheet. Yeah. So $50 for fun slash holidays, which is going to be used in February for Valentine's Day. Me and husband, um, we've kind of settled into like this uh, tradition of cooking fancy meals at home and um, just having kind of like a movie night. So the grandparents come get the now kids and the kids spend the night at their grandparents and like, you know, grandparents just helping us keep the spark in our marriage. Um, so that's what we do we don't go out or anything like that because it's gonna be crowded anyway so um we tend to do stuff at home when it comes to like holidays like this um we really don't need much we're pretty like low-key chill people so um yeah oh and i did volunteer to cook this year because usually husband cooks and he usually does like so, ugh, some fire filet mignon with some bacon wrapped asparagus mm y'all don't even know this man's cooking okay um i don't know what i should cook i'm trying to do something like fancy but within like i can follow a recipe can i cook from scratch not like y'all i'm not even we not even about to play these games i'm not even gonna pretend we not gonna friend i can't cook like y'all but i could follow the hell out of a recipe so if y'all have a recipe that I could cook that'll knock husband's socks off, drop it down in the comments. Otherwise, I'm on the prowl for something. Um, he's not a picky eater. He will really eat anything. We don't have any allergies or like anything like that. So I'm just looking for something that we never really had before. But it's also fancy. You know, like potatoes au gratin, au gratin. I don't, I don't even know how to say the word, but it's the potatoes with the cheese on it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, okay. So friends miss $30. Um, Christmas is getting $50 and this total is $267.65. I lied. It is not. I made some adjustments, adjustments to my spreadsheet and I need to read them and not the original print. Okay, 252.65. Okay, and that total is 248.98. Okay, so moving on to the planned expenses. If your new planned expenses are basically one-time um, occurrences for the month that you're currently budgeting in, and ours this month is going to be go out, like I said, but that's probably going to get pulled out of sinking funds if I am going. Um, and then $25 for a baby shower that I am expecting to go to in June, but I just want to fund, um, the gift money for the baby shower early so I can just get it out of the way. So this is the last $25 that we are going to be putting in that sinking fund. Okay, so um, onto the business expenses. I have iCloud, which is $9.99. Adobe Cloud, which is $19.99. Uh, I do have my P.O. Box renewal. I actually need to double check if I still have that P.O. Box because um, something's telling me that that mess expired, but I feel like I paid it. Mm, I'm pretty, mm, I don't know. I'm going to double check, but I'm going to um, budget for it just in case I do still have it. 
um, $94 and Epidemic Sound is $15. I am trying to use Epidemic Sound more by putting some background music in videos that aren't like super chatty like this one. So um, yeah, it should have been some background music as usual in my um, my budget setup this month, which, was, which should have been the video previous to this one. But um, yeah, and then new to the budget starting in February is HP Ink. I did buy a new printer because my old one was tripping. So I bought a new HP printer and signed up for HP Ink once we ran out. So um, the plan I signed up for was $2.99 for 50 pages, but hmm, you guys already know I'm way past that. So this month's bill um, is at $7 already because they charge you for like your monthly fees for whatever you sign up for. So like $2.99 for 50 pages and then um, any pages that you go over, they charge you $1 per 10 pages. So I'm already over the 50. We're at 40 additional um, pages already. I had to really think about it because I'm just like, I don't know how many pages I'm gonna print it. So um, we're already at $7, but I don't intend to stop printing. I'm hoping I'm done because I already printed my templates for February, um, but husband may need to print and I may need to print unexpectedly. So I'm just gonna budget uh, $15 for HP ink in the month of February. And if we don't use all of that, I'm gonna just hold it in that bill account to be used for the future. So that's what's gonna happen there. And then Planner Supplies gets another 100 this uh, go round. So the total for this is 248.98, I believe, I'm pretty sure. Cause on my um, Excel spreadsheet, I have uh, planned expenses as its own section. And then I have my business expenses as its own section. But on this, um, my drill down budget planner, I put them all together because I will be making this planner available to you guys. I'm going to keep saying it until I make it available to you guys because I'm holding myself accountable. Communication failure. So, yeah. Um, and the remaining total should be, oh, I forgot to, uh, to write the sinking funds remaining. The sinking funds remaining was $248.98. 248.98 minus this 248.98 equals zero. So um, to check my math, I'm gonna go ahead and do my budget summary. And if that budget total equals zero as well, then I know that I have a zero base budget. So hold please. All right, so I just wrote in zero like I actually did the calculations. <clears throat> Who am I? We all know my mental math is terrible. So let's do this real quick. See, look at that, $30 left. Let me do this again. All right, so. I came up $30 in the budget total, which is what I, which isn't what I wanted. So um, I just messed up on the remaining from the sinking funds. So my planned expenses is actually $278.98, not $248.98, which makes up for that $30. So now we have a zero base budget, which is exactly what I wanted. So now we are going to move on to the weekly breakdown portion of this video. And um, basically that just means that I'm going to take all of the numbers that I just wrote and I'm going to write them in either column one or column two, which designates um, expense tracker number one or paycheck number one and expense tracker number two or uh, paycheck number two, um, whichever you like to think of it as. So um, we are on a bi-weekly budget, which is why I'm in my bi-weekly version of my drill down budget planner. So I'm going to have a bi-weekly version and a weekly version for those, you know, so you can budget how you need to and not conform to, you know, a planner that doesn't quite fit your needs just because you like the layout. Um, Yes, so now what I'm gonna do is anything in these light pink 
colored dots I'm gonna write in column number one and then anything in these darker pink dots I'm gonna write in column number two because that is um, the respective paycheck that they fall into because um, paycheck number one goes from the first through the 15th and then paycheck number two goes from the 16th through the last day of the month so we are gonna go ahead and do that um really quick before i do that so when you guys are using this budget depending on where you are in your budget journey what you will probably end up doing is you will split your pay um between the columns and then you'll do the exact same thing as i just did with my budgeted section but me and husband are one month ahead so we control how much money goes to which paycheck or which expense tracker. So that's why I'm not starting with my um, income this time. I'm gonna do my expenses first and then I'm gonna split up my um, income according to how much we need for paycheck one and paycheck two, if that makes sense. So um, you might be doing yours slightly different when you get hold of this planner, <clears throat> which by golly will be in the next couple months if I have a say about it, but Okie dokie. So I split everything from um, this monthly calendar, which is any bill or whatever that is date specific. I went ahead and assigned it to column one and co or column two. So now what I'm going to do is take everything else that hasn't been assigned to a column and put it into um, either column one or column two. Most of these items, um, I'm just going to split. I'm just going to split in half because we need them for um, paycheck one and paycheck two. So things like childcare, gas, groceries, that kind of thing, I'm gonna just split in half. So let's do that now. So um, childcare is 570 for both paychecks. Um, and I'm just gonna quickly scan that everything in this column was assigned to either budget one or budget two. So I'm gonna do that as I go through and split everything else gas groceries and Costco I'm just going to split in half as well so 180 and 180 uh, groceries is 80 and 80 and then Costco is 175 and 175 uh, diapers we do need another box so I'm put that in paycheck number one um the debt has been allocated to column one and column two sinking funds i'm going to put it in um i'm going to put it all in budget number two just because that is the last budget of the month and if we did good like i am intending that we do then um this 22 dollars will be put into um sinking funds automatically once um paycheck or you know the pay period for paycheck number two rolls around um, but for right now, clothing, um, we're pretty good on clothing. So I'm going to put that in paycheck number two. Um, fun slash holidays is going to fall into the first paycheck because, um, it's for Valentine's day, which is the 14th, but the 14th, I believe falls during the week. Yeah, it falls on a Monday, so we'll probably celebrate the weekend before. Oh, that weekend before, I think this is Super Bowl Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, because I just looked that up because the family just announced like who's going to be hosting the Super Bowl party. Um, and I have somewhere to be this day, so it'll be Saturday when husband and I celebrate Valentine's Day, which might work out hmm. I'm gonna have to talk to husband about that but either way it's gonna the Valentine's Day or fun slash holidays 
Um, money is going to fall into paycheck number one because that's when I need it. Friendsmiths can go into paycheck number two because we don't need that. Uh, it's for Christmas in December uh, as well as the Christmas sinking fund. It's in for December. So that can go into paycheck number two. And I'm going to come back to the totals and everything once I'm done assigning everything to a column. Baby shower, we could put that in paycheck number two just because I don't need that until June. Um, P.O. box, um, I'm pretty sure that's not due until the end of the month. But just in case, I'm going to put that in the first paycheck so I can have it at the beginning of the month just in case. Um, HP Inc., I think my sus subscription... Uh, is based on the day that I sign up and I just signed up the other day. So that is going to fall into paycheck number two, I believe. Um, and then planner supplies. Let's see. January. I use January's planner supplies money in order to buy my Valentine's Day planner supplies from like Simply Gilded, things like that. Planner supplies, as I was thinking, I don't think I'm going to need that because I already got my March washi um, in this last Simply Gilded order. So unless Cookie Sticker Co. or uh, Rose Color Days comes out with a release that I absolutely must have, I won't need planner supply money. You know what? We're overthinking it. Let's split it in half. And that way, if I do need something in the beginning of the month, I'll have $50 for one of those surprise, you know, shopping trips and then um if i don't need it then i'll just put it with the other half at the end of the month how about that let's not complicate things randasia let's not complicate things you be doing too much sometimes i swear you just mm, i don't know what to say about you sometimes okay all right, so I think everything has been assigned to a column. So let's go ahead and add up column one and column two so that I know how much money to put towards um, paycheck one and paycheck two, respectively. So. All right, so column number one total for monthly expenses is 2,783 spa 61. Let's move on to the next column, which is going to be cash envelopes. And we got 180 plus 80 plus 175 plus 40. Oops. Ah, crap. Okay, so that total is 475. The only difference between these two columns is the $40. So I'm going to, for this, um, section, I'm going to do four. Oops, that is not a four. Four thirty five for this column. Um, these two columns, two fifty six twenty nine and one twenty six um, down here in sinking funds. Column number one is fifty dollars. Column number two is going to be two oh two sixty five, I believe. But we already know. Mental math. 202.65. Okay. So since I already did this side, let me go ahead and backtrack and do column number two for monthly expenses really quick. Okay. So 1,231 spot 45. All right. Is the column number two monthly expense total? Um, Planned expenses. Okay, 173.98 for column number one. And let's do this one really fast. That is going to be 105, but let's just add it up. Yep, 105. Okay, so now um, I'm going to add up all the sections in column number one and get the total that I need for the income. And then that way I can put the remaining amounts and complete this weekly breakdown section. Um, and then I'm going to do, you know, same thing for column number two. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So 3,738 spot 88 is the income that we need for, oh wait, hold on. 
because I did this last time, 3,738 is the total income that we need for column number one. So if I take this amount, subtract this 238.98 to, oh wait, no. What goes right here is the business expenses. So for the business expenses, um, it's just this amount right here. Okay, 173.98 is what I need for business in column number one. Okay, so that leaves me with 3,600 that I need for paycheck number one um, or expense tracker number one in order to pay all of the bills that fall in paycheck uh, or in column number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for column number two. Oh, you know what? Let's just do this first, um, $80 for business income is what I need. So I don't forget to do that next time. Now I'm gonna sit here and add this whole thing up again when the total is right there. I can't stand myself sometimes, one, two, three. Two thousand one hundred and ten cent is what we need in total for column number two. Two thousand one hundred ten. Let me add these two up to make sure that they equal that really quick. Five eight three eight about ninety eight. Okay, so I know that my math has been correct so far. So let me back into the income that we need for um, paycheck number two. Okay, so $2,020.10 is the income that we need for paycheck number two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the remaining so really quick. Alrighty, so columns number one and column columns number one and two came out to zero, which is what I want because I'm doing zero based budgets for um, each paycheck. So that concludes the weekly breakdown of um, my February budget. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna do the digital cash envelope stuffing in the next video. So this video doesn't end up being over an hour. So um, the whole month's worth of budgeting, easy peasy. How we stay on budget is we basically follow this plan. I'm gonna break this monthly uh, budget down into my expense trackers for um, a two week period. And all I'm gonna do is follow what's on paper for those two weeks. This is my plan to stay on budget. If you don't have a plan, then you're gonna go off budget. So um, at least if you go off budget, then you know, and you're making a conscious thought to go off budget. So um, you're not waiting and like trying to track expenses and all that good stuff um, after you spent the money. Like, you know, before you spent the money that you're gonna go over budget or something like that. Like you. This is why I like this um, drill down budget planner that I came up with because you will know before you make the decision to swipe that card or hand over that cash to go over budget. There's no excuse whatsoever um, unless you didn't do your budget, um, but that's still not an excuse. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna try and keep it like this. Let me know if you like this uh, kind of style better than January's budget where I did everything straight through including the digital uh, cash envelope stuffing. So if I do it that way, like January, then the video, the budget video is gonna be extra long and you're only gonna get two like sit down budget with me type of videos a month. Um, this way it'll be three, videos they'll all be kind of long they'll at least be over 20 minutes so um it's kind of up to you guys and what you want to see so if you want to see less than 20 minutes let me know and i'll cut it down even further but i just make um you know i try to just speed up the calculations part 
um and that's it just so you guys will get all of the detail and my thought process and everything like that so you're truly budgeting with me um if like you're sitting down doing your own budget as well so either way give me a big thumbs up if you like the video that way i know that you guys liked it and keep doing it like this or leave me a comment down below saying that you want the videos to be like January or do you just want completely separate videos for every single thing like I used to do. So um, it's kind of up to you guys. I enjoy doing just the three videos um, a month so that I can give you other content throughout the month. More planner content, vlog-ish kind of videos are in the works. Um, but I just want to make sure that, you know, my main content, which is budgeting content, is good with you guys before I move on to doing like concentrating on new styles and new types of content to bring you guys so yeah all that to say you guys know the drill already hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of my content and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye